Well, 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 we've got one last replay to cast between the Shambler and Hapsaya. Let's see what happens. It's once again on Germination, and Hapsaya will once again be in the top left. The Shambler, on the other hand, will be in the bottom right. And this time I'm sure we won't see any shenanigans related to... What was it? Simulacra! Oh my god, if you missed the last cast, I highly recommend you go back and watch it, just for game two alone. But these two also have a lot of typing. And do we have Newt? Oh, we still have Newt. Okay, great. We might see some typing from him as well. Because even when he's not playing, he can sometimes get tilted. I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the project. I hope you guys are loving to see what we've got cooking up. And once again, this is Germination by Biddy B. Still uh, evaluating this map. I did have some thoughts about uh, how it might be improved in the, in the future, but we're going to wait and see. You know, we're we're trying to be a little bit more on the, what would you call it? The, uh, I guess, the, the cautious side. The, you know, let, let's just see what happens side. And it's definitely something that uh, we can figure out over time. That, that goes for balance changes and, you know, any any revisions to units and stuff like that as well. So we're trying to be a little bit on the slow side because that also, uh, funnily enough, opens us up to be able to develop more things instead of agonizing over all the individual little stuff. So we will have a Lattice coming up. Maybe we'll see some Simulacra again. Or maybe he's going to go Vassals and just annoy Shambler. We'll, we'll find out. Actually, as I record this, Subsea is interested in playing Cosmonarchy right now. So if you think it would be funny to make him type, or if you think it would be funny to make Shambler type, I highly recommend you join our Discord server, and you too can make them type. There's going to be a scout for Shambler this time around. His Maverick hanging around, just seeing what it wants to do, looking around. Oh, yeah, I, I, I think I'll find a nice spot to just have a cigar break. Oh, speaking of which, uh, tomorrow... Uh, on the day of recording, anyway, uh, is going to be Luciferius's birthday, so definitely check him out. He's uh, smoking cigars to celebrate, apparently. So uh, by the time you're listening to this, he's already done that. But still, uh, ask him how it was. Maybe he'll drop a comment. He actually comments on Odyssey because my videos do get cloned over there. I don't really ever talk about it because I always forget. <laughs> I set it up a long time ago. But uh, you know, that's just something else to think about. I did like the forward gate over here that Hepsea did in game one of the last cast. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. The Sims are indeed revealed. A Maverick is going to be on its way to maybe donate more Sims, uh, but more likely it'll end up stimming and just running in for a deeper scout to see what's actually coming out. But yeah, here we go. We already have the action here. He needs to stim now if he's going to do it. Uh, uh, oh, stim too late. Stim too late. The drugs didn't even kick in before you got annihilated. What a way to go. Fulcrum coming online. I guess if uh, if they stim, right? Uh, people have probably been playing Helldivers 2, or at least they know about it. And uh, they probably are aware of how bad that game is with inputs. And so you'll constantly get interrupted in the middle of an animation to try to stim. Uh, and uh, you'll not actually do it. So I guess, I guess Mavericks have been updated with their new stim to uh, to be like Helldivers. I guess that, that does confirm it. And they're about as expendable, anyway. Now the uh, sims are indeed going to run up here and get bopped. And look at this. Look at what I'm saying is doing. He's cloning himself. He's just walking in and letting the automatic fire do the rest. Yeah. Ah, ah. Watch out. <laughs> so he's got... <laughs> this is so APM intensive, and that can happen, too. So <laughs> it doesn't feel like a good move to me. <laughs> That's the Three Crows special right there. Uh, just that, just the screenshot. That screenshot, honestly, of, of Treasury scouting the Mavericks, <laughs> the Sims walking up to, to clone. Oh, my God. Ridiculous. Well, the uh, quarry is almost online. Here comes the Goliath. The big guns have been amassed. And now it looks like the treasury is going to get tickled. All right. Where's the reaction? He's uh, He's gotten a lot of free units, but is it really free? Because they're so low. And the decollision also can stop, make them uh, walk into your enemy, depending on how Brood War feels about doing it in that moment. So, All right. He's got eight eight sims. He's going to have ten in a moment. He got, he's got a, a fleet of vassals being produced off of three vas lattices. That's <laughs> that's interesting. The, the vassal reaction. There is no anti-air, so no uh, watchdogs or anything like that. Uh, but there's also no expansion here for our Protoss player. So this feels like a pretty strong position for Shambler, actually. I don't think he can really get out of his base anytime soon uh, because the Sims will eventually overwhelm him, although they're actually going to go ahead and see if they can flank while the vassals are pathed towards over here. Yeah, so they're going to hang out above the... Three o'clock location. Natural now on the way here for Hapsea. 
not going to be doing the Benno move. Uh, the Benno move, by the way, is when you... Uh, the, the Benno expansion is what we're going to call it, is when he drops a pylon instead of a nexus, so that if you scout it, it looks at a glance that he's putting down a an expansion. But actually, he's uh, not doing that. So... Chambler holds his fire, thankfully, so he won't have yet another sim to deal with. The Goliaths have indeed been pulled away. The vassals can think about striking now. And as long as the as Absea keeps his forces in this general vicinity, he's he's keeping the uh, the forces away from defending things like the Masons and, and maybe this quarry even. The quarry doesn't have t spectacular armor values, so uh, the vassals could potentially do something about that. But the Sims have already abandoned ship, so they're not going to be able to stab in and do a little bit more damage, and it looks like it will just be workers on the way out. So, you know, that's a pretty good number, right? We're talking about like five, six workers dead. There is a, uh, there's actually a watchdog kind of already put out over here. So Shambler did figure things out uh, in terms of his uh, game sense, you can say. But that's still a lot of workers dead, right? That's something like six, seven, eight workers. You imagine it could have been maybe a little bit more if the Sims kept the uh, ground force occupied. But Hapsaya didn't want to risk not having any ground forces left to hold off. Because, you know, behind this, it's not like he has other combat units coming. He's just got an idol being trained. So his Sims are going to cr uh, crawl across the map. He will have a couple of reinforcing vassals to get bring his count up to 15. This cleric is not in the right spot. So that will actually just get sniped. That's a pretty big pickup. That means that there's only one cleric alive right now. We've got more watchdogs coming online to stop the push from coming in. But look, they're all behind the minerals. This means the gas workers can be heckled pretty nicely. A stimmed uh, set of mavericks are going to come on down. And that will zone them away. So he loses two fresh workers in favor of three vassals. You, you still like this trade as the Protoss. But the Protoss is dancing with, you know, around the fire right now, sort of kicking in the coals, hoping that there's not some kind of eruption that just slaps him in the face. Because if the Terran just walks across the map with more Goliaths and, and Mavericks and Clerics, he can just end the game, right? As soon as the Watchdogs go down in more defensive positions, which they have started to cycle over to, it's going to be a lot harder for Hapsaya to get any mileage out of his vassals. He's going to poke on in, see if he can heckle the uh, the Watchdog, but it's still within range of this one, and so it's not at all cost efficient. He will kill one of them, but he ends up losing something like five, six vassals for the fight, for the effort. But he does confirm where the army is, and now he's consolidating his forces with some wardens. So I think maybe Hapsaya has realized, okay, I can't really get too much more damage dealt I might have forced, you know, a couple more watchdogs because it looks like I'm still doing a lot of vassals. But uh, Shambler, at the very least, uh, has that economic tempo still. Hapsaya has caught up in the worker count, actually superseded it, and taking a third base faster. So this is perfect. No, well, I would hesitate to say perfect play, obviously. But it's it's a great option, right? It, it's, it's a good theory. From a, from a theory standpoint, Hapsay obviously has a lot of RTS experience in general. So he knows that he's forced his opponent to think about defense more than offense, despite having a much weaker army than Shambler. And now Shambler is in a situation where he's maybe thinking about doing a move out, maybe he's thinking about doing a uh, another base, but he's going to add a stockade and a fulcrum over here, so it looks like he's thinking about a more military-minded push. He's going to start uh, maybe wandering across the map, see what he can do. Now, if he stabs in from 12 o'clock to attack that, that third base location, you know, that could be a nice angle for him. He obviously has the means to repel any additional vassal play, and that is not even going to be the main focus. The vassals have now, again, consolidated with the rest of the ground force. They're going to be used as, as chaff, so to speak, to if they pop off. Uh, when they die, they, their corpse will take a second, and then it will release a burst of energy that will accelerate the movement speed of all allies of the va dead vassals. So this means that uh, Hapsaya's forces will actually gap close faster for things like his golems, which will, are melee units, for his sims and idols, which are a little bit less uh, mobile most of the time. Uh, so that could very well be a pretty effective strategy. Now, the uh, sauntering is going to continue as Shambler w waddles on up the ramp from 12 o'clock, as I sort of predicted. It's a, a pretty sound move, and uh, he's going to see if he can burn down the Nexus, but there is no Horakan over here to rend the, rend the armor. And here come the uh, the vassals. Some of them did end up dying earlier, and that is going to force the golems in a little bit faster. You can see the uh, overwhelming amount of damage is going to be too much, and the golems doing a great job shielding themselves. I think only two golems went down in that fight. So that was an overwhelming military victory for the Protoss. What is the reaction behind here? We still don't see any add-ons for the Fulcrums. He does have a number of Goliaths. He has an anchor over here. Defensibility-wise, I think this army doesn't really do very well at sieging, but it might still be able to, to thin the whatever herd is, is going to be amassed in the meanwhile. And we do have an architect on the way as well as, a, as an embassy uh, training an envoy. So he's going to have transport available to him if he wants to put the architect in there and, and maybe like a, uh, I was going to say a zealot. He doesn't have a gateway. I guess maybe like an idol or something. Um, or a couple of sims might be good uh, harassment to supplement the architect drop. Uh, the second anchor is on the way. Vassal's there for vision. Obviously gets revealed by the anchor as well. 
and uh, just narrowly escaping the range of the anchor, but it looks like he's st stepping a little bit too close into there, and his units are indeed going to get a little bit confused. He's trying to burn down the stockade. It is a, a valuable asset because it can train healing units thanks to the Vestry add-on, so it will end up going down, but there's a lot of sustained fire being taken over here. And the shields can only hold for so long, despite having so many golems. We've got another anchor coming online on the low ground that'll be shifted up in position. Could see another stockade being added. We've got a, a ministry. So you can tell when when you go for a, a ministry as uh, as a Terran instead of a treasury, it's because you're very worried about like light harassment and stuff. The treasury does not have the same armor value, right? It has three armor instead of four armor of the ministry. So something to keep in mind. It can be burned down a lot better, a lot easier. So here we go. We, we are going to get a drop. The uh, Architect is just moving across the map slowly. It's going to be a double golem sim simulacrum drop. And I think this is a good play because, you know, he, he's aware at this point, Hapsaya, that he can just drop in the mineral line or something. He'll sacrifice his, his envoy to do it, or he can drop on the outskirts and then move them in. Uh, but he wants to draw the army out first, so he's going to wait a little bit for that. It's not liable to do too much damage, but it's just like if it doesn't get... Uh, dealt with, it's something that you will have to worry about, right? And again, we don't see any add-ons here for the mech, so we don't see any phalanxes to, to deal with the architect. There's like a couple of different conditions here that are favoring our Protoss player, but he is going to lose his architect because of the engage. So that that's Shambler recognizing I don't have the tools to efficiently deal with this. I need to take any opening that I possibly can. Now the drop hit is free. It is going to head out into that mineral line and force these uh, ground units to choose between defending one side or the other. This anchor wasn't garrisoned, and it looks like Kapsaya is just going to be content with attacking the mineral line, but it's not going to be getting too much worker kill death. Like, th there's not really that many workers going down to this, and uh, now the ground force is free to respond to that. So, it's not as efficient as it could be. I really don't like Shambler trying to drill onto this. The golem deals splash damage, so you don't want to stack all your workers up like that. That probably led to, like, three or four extra workers dying uh, than needed to even getting one more at the very end. And now here comes the counter engage. We have the architect here. This stockade never landed onto the uh, vestry. So I think Kapsaya might be able to overwhelm. I mean, there's still a lot of Goliaths and there's not really any front line anymore. So there is that. Getting some pretty good spread damage here. The uh, focus fire is good for the idols. Now there's here come the golems. This is where the architect can turn and fight a little bit and focus fire onto the goliaths. But I think Shambler has just barely held. Both players having a lot of minerals. 12 o'clock coming online for our Protoss player as well. So he's going to have a fourth base. There's three architects now. I feel like this is GG. But I don't know. There's a lot of goliaths here. So maybe he can really stick to it and, and do it. You know, there's a chance Shambler can uh, try to deal with the re reinforcements as they come online. Architect down. Another one could go down if it's focused properly, but you know what? You can also just take the fight against the high HP one, and if you kill it, then that's all, you know, well and great for you. I think with a cliff advantage, you should have it. Oh, it's going to escape with just a little bit of HP. Shields. It doesn't have many shields, so the shields look like they're regenerating super fast. And there's two more architects waiting in the rally. That's three dead Goliaths for sure. And uh, yeah, at this point, Shambler realizes, okay, wait a second. I got to back up. He's got three masons up here. I'm not sure what they're... Uh, use cases. Maybe he wants to construct some anchors or something. He does not have tier two yet. He's adding a ministry and maybe thinking about another ministry because <laughs> he had so many minerals, uh, but he doesn't really have anything producing out of his production. I think he's forgotten about the production in the natural. Okay, starting to add some clerics to that. Wants Goliaths. Doesn't have... Uh, well, I was going to say he doesn't have gas, but that's actually Apsaya limited by gas right now. Adding defenses, a crucible. That's a big gas sink. His SimCity is not ideal. Units are trying to path through here and then getting stuck. It's great for walling the ramp, not so great for the mid-stages of the game. All righty then. Well, uh, with access to another base, it does feel like the Protoss is going to be in a pretty good spot. Anchor moving over here to see if it can help secure and save face against that ramp into 6 o'clock. And with double ministry coming down, I mean, the ministries are way harder to destroy than the treasuries are, right? So at least Shambler will have secure enough bases that it'll take a long time to kill. So he'll have a, a lot of opportunity to respond, but I still don't see any Palladiums. If you don't have any counter artillery for the uh, inevitable <laughs> architect stack, it does feel really hard to hold out as Terran. So you need, you need phalanxes to deal with that, or you need sentinels, or you need cataphracts, or something that can, can kind of like trade with them as far as the engagement goes and ideally not stay uh, stay dead for too long. I guess you could also do a Storm of Harakans and Mavericks because the split damage doesn't matter as much, but there's so many of them, right? And so that, that alone is going to be very punishing for Goliaths by themselves. We've seen Shambler rely heavily on Goliath Cleric for a long time, 
and it hasn't really worked out the best for him. He's ma now making five a pop. That's very impressive production. His third base is fully online now. Worker count not that different, even though uh, there is a fourth base up and running. So the gas income is much different, and I would say the mineral income is also uh, in Hapsaya's favor definitively. We do have a, a architect sim drop over here. So this, this could cause some commotion, especially with the Cyprian splitting that sim. Oh no, he split both of them. That's going to be four sims in a moment. So they, they are multiplying. This is going to have to be a bit of a reaction here because the architect, you know, it's just a little bit annoying to deal with. Uh, now there's not too many workers over here anyway, but he never ended up getting tier two. So he's still stuck at tier one, 15 minutes into the game. The architect does get focused down and we will see the cleanup crew hit. Uh, one of the clerics did die. You know, some economic disruption. That base is kind of mined out. Now we have all of these Goliaths trying to stand tall. There's uh, four Mavericks in the anchor, which is an interesting choice. We do have, what is this, six Architects? You know, sounding off shot after shot after shot. It's not looking good for Terran. One o'clock coming online for the Protoss. Six o'clock now started. Some workers transferring over there. But he's not really mining from his uh, main. Okay, he has retransferred workers over there. I was going to say, the most important thing is the gas. He's not getting anything out of this ridge. And he's draining his coffers by building nonstop Goliath. But he still doesn't have tier two. So that's a, that's kind of a key detail. He didn't put any watchdogs to cover the air approach for the uh, for the envoys. You know, two watchdogs in an, in an area can do pretty well versus a single envoy. Now, here comes the push. We do have some analogs here, but there's no crowd control. The analogs aren't really that useful at the end of the day. And the uh, ministry's over here to see if it can soak up some of the architect shots. Not a bad shout in that situation because you are reducing the uh, DPS under your army. And it happens to be here because he was trying to see if he could take that low ground base. The uh, anchor is dead. There are still a lot of Goliaths over here, but it feels like with all the healing being destroyed and you know the, the architect count being too high, now the servitors are out as well. That's gonna deal a lot of damage uh, to the Goliaths. And yeah, once again, a GG-less end to a game with Hapsea taking the series de decidedly three to one. And you look at that. Would you look at that? We get some nice TVP action. We get to see what some of the strategies look like. We get to see Hapsea uh, drop the first game and then come back into it swinging with uh, a resounding set of victories. Uh, the, the the middle game was kind of funny because obviously it had the simulacra move. I did didn't mind the move that he did versus uh, what uh, what Chambler was doing with regards to the the bio and stuff going for lattice opener in that last match was was interesting. It was an, a, a neat little wrinkle. Uh, we'll have to see more play out of those two players and out of this matchup to see what other kinds of things you can do in the opener. Uh, but I do think that uh, Shambler needs to think about w incorporating phalanxes into the army so that he can deal with things like architects. Uh, the, the analogs are not as good versus phalanxes as they used to be because they now clone the damage in accordance with how much damage they got. So if they only took five damage from a splash radius phalanx shot, they'll give you two and a half back because it, it halves the damage, right? So it's not nearly as good as it used to be where it used to do like the full damage back or half of the full damage back. So, it, it, oh, I, I took uh, three damage to my shields because of a phalanx shot here's 30 damage back like that was way way better right so obviously very different now uh so it, it does feel like phalanxes are much better versus the ardent authority pushes obviously you see how how clumped up the servitors were the the siege blasts would definitely help out quite a bit uh but shambler stuck to his guns stuck to his goliaths i uh, didn't want to tech into tier two for sentinels either so maybe didn't feel like it was possible i'm sure he'll leave comments as he often does uh, but he said that he's having a good time playing terran despite the lower win rate so we're, we're fans of that. We like when people have a good time in Cosmonarchy. And if you think you can have a good time too, and I think you can, who couldn't? Who wouldn't? Pop on into our Discord server and uh, check out our new fraud launcher. And uh, other than that, I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.